uh, editor's cut uh, is uh, the next thing in focus, isn't it, Neeraj? Yes, and um, you know, interesting. I'm, I'm, this is um, a bit of a, how do I say, inspiration from a Ravi Dharamshi tweet yesterday, and then an IFL note which has kind of brought it out. So we're standing on the shoulders of um, IFL predominantly, but also brought to notice by Ravi. But it's just uh, interesting, uh, and Alex, I don't know if you found it interesting, that uh, much as what we would have thought would work when we were all sitting in our bedrooms and working on Zooms and laptops, much as what we thought would work, mm. the next four years since COVID lows have shown a completely different trend. So the texture is what you're talking about, right? The texture pre-COVID and post-COVID, I don't think we talk about it enough because that's, of course, a bit of a nightmare that we've all forgotten and everybody's focused on the run-up that we saw very, very quickly after COVID and the COVID crash. But it's interesting. So let's talk about the texture pre, just to lay the context, because I think a lot of our viewers and a lot of the investors out there have missed that entirely, right? We have so many new investors. New investors. Yeah. So, so talk about what happened before. Yeah, so just why is this important? I mean, because one, it's a very broad-based wealth creation cycle that has happened post-COVID lows. Why is it important? Because just pre-COVID, um, I've coined a term right now, maybe it was existing, but quality at any price, right? QAAP. Yes, it exists. Yeah. So people used to say buy at any price, BAP or whatever it is, instead mm. of GARP, which is uh, growth at reasonable price. But you know, there was this whole notion of buying quality at almost any, any price, price right. which is why the term Rithik got coined, right? Which is all the key stocks, which is HDFC Bank, Reliance, Infosys, etc., so on yeah. and so forth. So the Rithik stock, the Rithik mania, from a market's perspective, was very much out there. And people used to focus on those stocks. So narrow market, mid caps and small caps underperforming, those select names, quality names outperforming, that was the norm. Mm. Now, did COVID change that? Maybe not in the immediate aftermath, because post-COVID as well, you saw some of the strong balance sheet companies do very well. Mm -hmm. And during, the, during that period, everybody said that, oh, the company needs to be large, needs to have a moat, needs to have cash flows, needs to have a strong balance sheet, right arguments to yeah, survive. Yeah. And we probably saw that for the first six months post-COVID as well. Especially the companies that got smashed, something like a Bajaj Finance, a Bajaj Twins, yeah, various or, other or large companies. Campaigns, et cetera, right. All of which which said right. that, oh, we'll give our employees a, you know, the, the right, uh, these things, et cetera. And some of those stocks did very well. Yeah. But if you look at a four-year period, which is from COVID lows March, March 31st COVID lows, mm. till now. Now, our calculation is from March 31st mm. uh, that we've done. The IFL note spoke of the COVID lows, which could have been March 23. Sure. So we've done from March 31st. Look at what's happened since COVID lows. The wealth creation has been unimaginable mm. and very broad-based. Yes. So, uh, Bucketed into four, and if you if you didn't have four <laughs> renewables, you don't have your father to curse. You have yourself to curse uh, because it's stock. I'm sorry, but some of these numbers, Neeraj, I must point out the the the, the growth in price is obscene. Obscene. There's no other word for yeah. it. And last evening when I was preparing this list, I was sitting with uh, our colleague Alok Joshi, and I was telling him, "Kya apye dhyan se dekhe, apke just in jest." that in your portfolios, none of those stocks will be present. Yeah, and he was exactly. like, yes, that's true. <laughs> because somehow people miss some of these multi-baggers. Because the tr truth is that you will make these returns only if you are invested in these stocks through the journey. Yeah. But hey, look at the numbers, right, Alex? Over 1,000 times more, worry renewables, 1,202 times from those lows. It's, it's insane. We're talking about a 1,000 bagger in the span of three or four years. In right? four years, yeah. So think of it that way. And, but if, if that was a problematic year, but okay, let's, um, that's an outlier. There's also a dolphin offshore which has gained tremendously. Yes. But look at stocks which have had over a 100x move. Mm. That's 19 stocks out there which have had over a 100 times move. The likes of Aditya Vision, which is into uh, retail in the state of Uttar Pradesh, mm. uh, or Lloyd's Engineering, Wari Tech, SG Finserve, which is that uh, offshoot of the uh, APL Apollo Tubes uh, family, Lloyd's Metal, tra Transformers and Rectifiers. We've spoken we've to them recently. So many times, right? Yeah. And just look at the gains. So Lloyd's Engineering, 185 times. Uh, Transformers and Rectifiers, 133 times. CG Power and Industrial Solutions, 104 mm. times. Some stunning gains in a period of four years that some of these stocks have had. Not a very broad list, but not a narrow list either. Mm. And there's also 50x moves, right? And you yeah. identified 18 stocks in that list, and then 56 stocks in a 25 times move, which 
in any market is a phenomenal move. In four years, it's practically unprecedented. Yeah, so IFL Finance, IFL has identified that, but I'm bringing it to the notice yeah. of our viewers. So PG Electropast, Orion Pro, TIPS, Websol, yeah. PTC, Elicon Engineering, we spoke to the management two days ago. But look at the gains, PG Electropast, 74 times. TIPS Industries, 55 times. And then, the two biggest buckets, over 25 times. I mean, looking at a thousand times, 25 times seems low, but 25 times is egregious returns yes. any which ways, right? Yeah. 56 stocks and very regular names. Newland Labs speaks to us 25 times. Mm. Apar Industries, 25 times. Jindal Stainless, 25 times. And then from 4% from to 25, four, four from times. 4 times to 25 times, yeah. It's a large list, 443 stocks wow. have given these kind of returns. Some examples are BHEL, people dismiss PSUs, 11 times returns in yeah. four years. Yeah. Is, is, I mean, I IT. would think particularly the move in 2023 helped. Very likely, yes, yeah. exactly. Bidla Soft, nine times or 10 times. Vedanta, five times as well. Mm. So the wealth creation has been staggering. And the sectors that have dominated this list, Alex, construction, engineering, energy equipment, machinery, mm. old school economy facing sectors because of what's happened in the last two years have clearly outran almost everything that was quality back then. Uh, HDFC Bank, Reliance Industries, Infosys, sure Reliance has had us some gains, but it's not been the biggest gainer. So look at 2017 to 19, you will feel, oh, these are the stocks that will create wealth for life and then look at what's happened post-COVID lows. So the argument here then would be, okay, you've seen phenomenal gains and particularly at the broader end of the spectrum. The argument is that you've often see three, seen three to four year cycles for the broader markets and they've done incredibly well. That is evidence in the kind of gains right here. The question is, where do we go from here? And a lot of people therefore are talking about large caps and the ones that you've mentioned it's their time to shine again. Is that an argument that you can make? Could happen. Whether it's tactical or structural remains to be seen because as uh, uh, I'll just end this with, uh, I think what uh, Rajesh Bhatia of ITI had told me that while safety is in large caps, the India growth story is happening at the broader end of the spectrum. Just mm. look at the number of sectors that have gotten created and you will know that you don't necessarily have to buy an HDFC or a Reliance to participate in the EMS story, to participate in the defense story, to participate in the railway story. What have you? Uh, uh, the last point, and this is purely from a strategic point of view, if you're talking about a portfolio construction over three or four years, if you are somebody that has identified a thousand bagger, or at the very least a 25 bagger, uh, would you take money off the table and at least recover cost? So, and then the again, two ways to look at it. Sure. A lot of people say that Nahi bech ke pachitane se better hai ke bech ke pachita ho. All right? Yeah. But the great Rakesh Junjunwala, if he had sold Titan after 30 times returns, he wouldn't have created the wealth he did. In fact, as I think uh, uh, Ramesh Dhawani or Utpal Shet told me in one of the events, mm. that his largest allocation to Titan happened after Titan had rallied 30 times, times right. from his original purchase price. Right. Uh, again, this is what I faintly remember. Sure. But so, uh, well, you know, uh, Horses for courses. I'm, I'm actually curious about what our viewers have to say if they've got any of these stocks. Do let us know in the comment section if you're holding any of these, particularly the thousand bagger, <laughs> because I'm quite curious about that. And would you sell at this price is the question that I'm curious about the answers for.